What's so special about Hero Bread's soft, fluffy, and delicious breads, buns, and tortillas? These ultra low net carb baked goods contain zero sugar, fewer calories, and more protein than the leading brands, and are high in fiber to support gut health. Shop now at Hero.co. Hi, guys. Welcome to Cozy Pickers Podcast. My mommy Shan. Hey. My hey. sister Ari. Say hi, Ari. Hey. And I'm Anya. Let's go. Hey, this is Shan. Mom of the girls, thank you for checking in. If this is your first time at Cozy Womb Podcast, welcome. It's a very random but frequently posted show. Enjoy what you can when you can. It's for new parents. Y'all are very welcome. It's for a second, third, or more time around parents too. And I did not forget those of you who aren't quite there yet, haven't had your first kid, but you're thinking about it and you're just curious on what it takes to go ahead and survive the kids that you may make. Cool. Since we're all here, let's get into today's episode. Mama Rage! When I'm raging, I do not sound like that. Trust me. Um, what makes me rage? Ugh. Uh, lots of mess in the house. Screaming. Um, I hate when my daughters whine. I hate when they argue about something small. When I give them food, one will be like, I got a pink plate. And then the other one be like, no, mine is pink. And no, and then one will be like, I want the purple one. And then the other one, I want the green one. And it's just like, it's a plate. Who cares? Why do you care what color cup you have? So, like, stuff like that. It irritates me because when I grew up, me and my brothers didn't argue about the color of a plate. We didn't whine. Um, We did tease each other. We did fight. But my mom never... My mom was never irritated by kids doing kid things. And because I am not my mother... I am irritated when kids' things get too over the top and I can't concentrate and I can't think on what I'm doing or I can't hear something I'm watching or I can't hear something I'm listening to or I can't focus on what I'm reading because it's just constant screaming and whining and mom, 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 I is Stop. Like, I will say, if y'all don't stop screaming, I'm going to come in there and I'm going to turn the TV off. You're going to pack the markers up and the crayons and you're going to go take a nap. Usually, when I threaten them with a nap, they'll settle or they'll solve their problem themselves. But the whining, that puts me in a rage. Screaming in the car when I'm driving and I'm trying to concentrate, that puts me in a rage because... When a child randomly screams, any mother, anywhere, in the store, outside, uh, at school, in a parking lot, we're going to stop in our tracks. And when you're driving and you have to concentrate on yourself, you have to concentrate on if the kids are safe, you have to concentrate on if are you going through a green light or a red light, you have to concentrate on who's coming, who's not stopping, who's not paying attention. You cannot have a child screaming in a car. So that may put me in a rage um adult frustrations will put me in a rage that could be um in my mind yes I had picked up the girls but I'm worried about how I'm gonna pay for their school on Friday I'm worried about the fact that Arya or Anya needs another um uniform shirt I'm worried about the fact that like what am I cooking tonight Um, What did I buy? What do I need? I didn't make a list. Um, What got paid today? What credit card I need to pay today? Um, What account can I pull money from to transfer over to the next account? Did I pay everything that needs to get paid? What day was Georgia Power supposed to automatically come out? Did I do a payment arrangement for my loans? 
what job I have to work tomorrow. Is it this job or that job? What time do I have to be there? Do I have an interview set up? Is somebody supposed to be recording? Like, those are adult frustrations, okay? Second thing is me realizing that I yell too hard at my kids. That irritates me because once you yell, you can't take it back. And Anya is very sensitive when I yell. Ari hates you yelling or you raising your voice at her or you just talking to her in a frustrated tone. Like, she'll start crying. And then I feel bad about it. But sometimes that stuff, it just comes out because it's just so much I'm thinking about. There's so much on my plate. And I don't have anyone, like, right next to me to be like... Let me help you with this. Now, I could possibly call my friend to see, are you off such and such thing? I got this coming up or I have to work this night. Could you possibly watch them? And things like that. Sometimes. But as far as like immediate help, I don't have that here. It's like it's me, 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 me. I have to turn down jobs when it requires me to be certain places when I have the girls because I don't have anybody that can be like I need you to watch them for me tonight because I have to work like there is no tonight for me the only tonight I can do is like on the weekend and I have to take the girls to someone's house for them to watch them so I can work so and I hate like knowing that my time is taken for a job that I don't care about that I don't like For the sake of me paying bills when I could be spending time with my kids. Like, I hate that. And that gets under my skin, but... (sighs) It's part of adulting. Um, The third thing that gives me mama rage is... um, When I have to punish my kids for doing kids' things. Like, (laughs) the other day, Anya got two points on Class Dojo. Because she was doing good all week. And we made this deal that if she has good behavior all week, Saturday I'll buy her a toy. Won't be an elaborate toy. Won't be a $50 toy. It might be something, you know, small and petty from like the dollar store. Cool. I could get you a dollar. She gets to Friday. They have a field trip. They get back in the classroom. And her teacher puts on there, Anya is not being nice to her friend in class. So I turn around in the car and I say, Anya, what happened today? Um, so basically what happened, the fact that she is basically in the right manner. So basically what happened was I was sitting down in the chair at my desk and, um, this girl came and she was trying to squeeze in between the chair and my desk. And I told her she's too fat. So I had to explain to Anya that. You can't tell people that they're fat. You can't tell people that they're ugly. You can't tell people that you don't like something that they cannot change. You have to keep your thoughts and your words that are heartful to yourself. And if you want to express your thoughts like that, you can do it in the car with us. Or you could do it in the house. But you do not do that in public. You do not do that at camp. You do not do that at school. So that's something I'm going to have to teach her over time. And I'm not trying to mute my child's thoughts. I'm not trying to tell her she's not allowed to have her thoughts about people and her observations. But the way that you say things to people and kids, it's, it's not going to go so well. So... She got two points for that. She did say sorry, but she just didn't understand why she couldn't say it. Um, when I have mom rage, Anya will definitely come to me and say, Mom, why are you so mad at me? And it's not so much that I'm mad at the thing that she did. I'm mad that I sat there and I waited and I allowed you to stop by yourself and you did not stop. So now... All that waiting boiled up to me yelling. So, yeah. Um, When I have mom rage, I lock myself away for peace. 
I might go in my room. I might tell them to not come in here. I might give them a snack. I might give them something to drink. I might make sure that they're well fed. I might make sure everything is a way that I don't want them to get into. Put on a movie, put on a show, and hope that they behave themselves. Because sometimes we need quiet time for peace. Or sometimes I will force them to take a nap. Just so I can chill. Just so I can get some peace. Um, When I have mama rage, friend troops do come in. Chrissy may come in. Um, Chrissy has a key to my house. She can come and go as she wishes. I don't mind. She was actually here this morning. Um... Or my nephews may come over, or I may take them to my brother's house. Or my friend Henny may have them for a weekend. You know, like, friend troops, hello, thank you, call the help. Um, I appreciate them so much, they don't even know. The next thing that um, happens when I have mom raises, despite the struggles we've pushed through... I've definitely had days where it was either I get gas or diapers. The struggle days. So, how can I say this? So, with Anya, I'm like Anya's primary everything. I buy Anya's clothes. I buy Anya's food. I pay for whatever she got going on at school um I pay for everything financially with Anya Anya spends a lot of time with me Anya doesn't see her father um like physically enough here um she'll video him every once in a while but he lives out of state financially he is not consistent financially I cannot depend on him Financially, he's like 15k back in job support because it's out of state, um, and he has like no known address that they can find. I really can't do anything, um, but I don't feel like just because he owes child support that he should not have a relationship with Anya. So I allow them to talk. I allow them to have whatever time they want to have over the phone. Um, as far as him visiting here, is nothing consistent. Is nothing I can count on. And I don't know. It's kind of like I've done everything I can do to make that go the way that it should go. And it's not going. So I have to deal with it. So I deal with it. Then we have Ari Zad, who lives here in Georgia. But legally... We cannot have any contact with each one another. But he does pay child support um, weekly. Um, But it's not where, like, he can have her on certain days or have her on the weekends or have her some weeks. Like, he has no, like, legal say on that. I can't take her over there. Um, I can't reach out to his family members. I can't drop her off at family or friend's house. I can't do anything like that yet. So we're working on him having some type of partial visitation, some type of partial custody. So everything is on me. So I do have to get to a point some days where it's either I'm paying bills or I'm paying a way to get to and from work or I'm buying them something that they need. Like... It's life, like, it fluctuates as far as, like, Chantal, how can you duplicate yourself or how can you do X, Y, and Z more with your hours in order for you to bring in enough income to pay your bills, get the things that your kids need, and um, maintain and get to back and from work. Because if I don't work, they really don't have what they need. If I don't work both jobs, they really don't have what they need. If I don't do things on the side to make money, they really don't have what they need. So when I tell you I am in demand and that creates a rage that anyone can get out of anywhere and <sighs> do I have road rage? I don't I don't feel like I have road rage. I just feel like 
my patience for people that do stupid things while I'm driving with my kids in the car is at like a negative 110. So don't do it. My patience when it's just me, it's probably like at a negative 12. It's not so bad. When, when, but when it involves my kids, just please don't do anything stupid because I just, I just cannot. Um, mama rage. Some days, you know, I wake up and I feel like a whole bunch of failure because I don't know. I'm not saying that if I was married or if I was in a relationship with one of their dads, I would be in a better position. I don't feel like I would because mentally, physically, emotionally, me and their dads do not match, okay? So that wouldn't be a good thing. And I'm not saying... um, me being in a relationship right now or me being in a marriage right now with someone else would fix everything as far as me being a mother. I feel like it would improve some of it, but it will also bring about its own issues. So when I get into times when I wake up and I feel like I'm failing as a mom, it, uh, it bothers me a little bit because, you know, when you have kids, you just want to give them everything and you want to make sure they have everything and you want to make sure you're your best so you could be your best for them. But then when you get to a position where you can't really do that, it gets really frustrating. And you have to constantly remind yourself um, that your kids don't see a failure. Your kids see someone who's always trying, someone who's always doing, someone who's always making a way, someone who always has an answer, someone who always will have an explanation for them, someone will always be open arms. That's what they see. And then you just have to like force force yourself to get up and look around. You have to force yourself to get up and look around and see that you have a kitchen, see that you have food in it, see that you they have beds, they have toys, they have books. See, watch them color, watch them watch TV, watch them dance, watch them run around, and just watch them be kids because your kids see a super mom. They don't see failure. They don't see... Um, maybe sometimes it might catch you feeling sad and, and kids pick up on that. But I try not to um, allow them to like dwell on times when I'm like that um which is why I play a lot of music in here I dance with them a lot I take them to the park I take them to the library um we'll go to Michael's or we go to um the art supply store and we'll find things to do we'll create things we'll do puzzles we'll play games and I just constantly just keep them in motion and I keep them um you know, reinventing and making moments because if I sit and I get stuck in a rut, that's where I'm going to stay in a rut. And I don't want to stay in a rut because I don't want them ever to get to a point in their life where they sit in their their mess and they don't figure out a way to clean it up and make it better. So mom, mama rage is true. It's real. It's honest. It's life. It's frustrations. But as long as we work through it, we can get through it. Um, and if there's anybody out there going through their own versions of mama rage, it's okay. It's normal. It's going to pass. Even when it doesn't feel like it's going to pass, it's going to pass. And if you have to cry, find a spot in your room and cry. If you have to go outside, go outside. If you have to go check the mail and cry to the mailbox and wipe up your tears before you get in the house then do that but it's normal we make it through we make a way and um use your resources if you get the right right if you have to take some time some hours for you do that and if you have to call a friend and be like can you please come over and watch them for like an hour just so i can get out of here please i need it do that mama rage you're not alone trust me